can't confirm or deny this because yeah. I still haven't seen uh, Kamala Harris's birth certificate. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I think it was like, oh, I Trump lied 63 times, Kamala lied one time. Like, okay. Just in the beginning of the debate, she was like, you're going to hear all about Project 2025. <laughs> I can't believe people still believe that shit. It's so dumb. It's ironically a great uh, smear campaign because. I could create a website and be like, well, well, Mark's running for Lake Mary mayor, you know, project 2036 or something like that and create all these random policies. Yeah. And like fake endorse you. And you can be like, I don't even know who this guy is. You, you should know. tell ChatGPT to write a project 2025 and make it about communism. <laughs> How we're going <laughs> to do communism and then release it. I don't know. The whole thing's weird. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here in the studio once again with myself, Alex Gonzalez, and my left-hand man, Mark Nikolai. I don't like the way you said that. Well, you're on my left. So... So what is Jared, your front left hand man? He's sometimes, he's like left forward. Jared and Zachary Nikolai, who is facing off against me. Why'd you break the microphone? I got tired of it. Look, I can't hear. He said he got tired of it. All right, so we're going to talk about a few different things, starting off with a new... Cigar that was released very recently. We're going to get into uh, something a little more lighthearted. Controversy on an app called Nextdoor. Ever heard of it? Uh, we're going to recap the debate and have some fun and tell you how you should prepare for the next presidency. Whether it is he or she. Hopefully it's Or he. they. Or they. You <laughs> never know. But first off, what are we all smoking? I'm smoking the tried and true... Besa Habano. What are you smoking? I'm smoking the not as tried and true, but still very good. The Crystal Baller Surrogates. Ugh. Ah, stop. Stop. Ah! Made by Tatawa. I'm smoking the Besa cigar. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Mic check. Mic. We, we can hear you. Mic, check the mic. All right, it's checked. Jared? I'm smoking for the first time ever a Daniel Marshall cigar. Really? Interesting. Very. Who is Daniel? And how do we know him? And how did he get court martialed? I'm not sure. I'm first assuming, time tasting it. I'm assuming for being disruptive in court. Happens. Happens to the best of us. It's a very Jared fashion cigar. It's like a 60 ring gauge. Actually, yeah. Good, a good, a good old size to hold in the hand, if you know what I mean. I don't know think about it so far. Well, we'll give you some time, and then you can circle back. Yeah, can we? Can we do a circle back? You can, can circle, circle back, back around. Circle back next week. Yeah, you know, let us know what you think after you ask ChatGPT what they think. So, first of all, yeah, we have to make an announcement. This is our news segment. There's a new cigar out there. Some of you may have heard. It's the Padron 60th anniversary. Mm-hmm. It's a Perfecto, not box pressed. So very different. Um, I had the. The luxury. I, 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 I wouldn't say that. I was, I was um, able to experience a cigar. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I was disappointed. I really was. I shed a tear. Was it the $100 price point that made you disappointed? Like, let's say this is a regular family reserve price. So anywhere from like 
you know, 25 to, you know, 50 max. It would be my least favorite family reserve. Interesting. I would buy any of the other family reserves over that. Personally, I would buy a regular 1926 over that. And that's a 60 ring gauge, right? What? The Bajoran 60? No. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's, it was aged for 60 years. <laughs> 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 right. So I, I just didn't enjoy it. You can watch the full review video on our channel as I go in depth on reasons why I did not enjoy it. Just like the McCown 18 you're drinking was aged for 18 years. Yeah, but uh, tastes good. So yeah, I, I, I was disappointed. Someone else told me they liked it for the reasons why I disliked it. So, so they, they work for Padron. Is that what you're saying? Actually, no, they don't. Did it have like a Padron it was first cigar. fashion flavor? That makes sense. It had the spice. It was very spice heavy, but that was about it. What spices? Like a lot of black pepper on the nose, mm. some cayenne pepper. I actually really don't find Padrones like crazy spicy. They didn't Th- have- this one was. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. This one was definitely really spicy. Jared might like it then. It's possible. What you got to do is cut the nipple off before you light it. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like a Jared type of cigar. I mean, I guess I could try it and do my own review, you know. But the fact of the matter is, since I was there filming it, it'd be biased for me to like have my own review because we had confirmation bias on top of what Alex was already saying. So I think Mark would be the best fit to purchase that cigar and try it. How much is it? It's like a thousand dollars, or <laughs> <laughs> doubly give it to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be seventy-five. There's a hundred though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I probably won't be buying that. So how did you accidentally pay $25 over price? It wasn't an accident. It was what we're going to get into right now, which is... Cigarflation. Cigarflation. <laughs> rise in prices. Is the rise in prices and this whole trend of like all these limited series coming out, is it becoming a trend? And uh, is it... Something that's naturally happening, or do you think some of these companies are just price gouging because they know that people are going to buy the cigar the day it comes out guilty? Well, the uh, 60th year or 60 years fooled me. You know, it's not age for 60 years. <laughs> I don't think anyone thinks that about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One person, too many. <laughs> well, I didn't buy it, so. I mean, it makes sense, though. McCown 12 is aged 12 years. McCown 18 is aged 18 years. But it's, McCown it's not M 60, is aged for a millennium. Is it 60 years they've been in business? <laughs> it's 60th anniversary, not 60 years, though. Yeah. However, they do have cigars that are 80 years and so on and so forth. So At the 26. <laughs> this, no, it's not 1926. It's not 26 years or whatever, whatever you want to say. Hmm. That's not the year it was made? No. I feel like that's false advertising. It does get a little confusing. What do, like, what do all the years mean? We should have looked that up before this. What all the years mean? Yeah, like why do they have like 45 year, 48 year, 50 year? Well, 1964 is the year they started, I believe. And this is the 60th anniversary. It's 2024. So they started 60 years ago. Oh, uh, so the 50 year came out 10 years ago? Yeah. Imagine that. It's just weird because like if you want to buy a car, right? It's like I can't buy a 1964 brand new in 2024 <laughs> this year, right? So it's kind but of you like can a, still buy that's, it. That's a good point though. That is yeah. a good point actually. Yeah. But if they had the inventory, you could. Mm. In theory. In theory, yeah. Yeah, yeah but you're not going. Yeah, I get what you're They'd saying. They have to keep the car in cellophane or something, you know, for all the years. Make it- Correct humidity. <laughs> <laughs> Correct temperature. We don't want the leather to, you know, get Jersey, all. Yeah, this bad boy's got some age on it. <laughs> now, was the car I think, um, originally yellow or was this because of the age? <laughs> and I think 1926, I might be wrong, but it's when um, one of the guys was born. Makes sense. And then they started in 64. I could be wrong, but I know for a fact they started in 64. But again, do you think that companies now are intentionally raising their prices and doing these limited releases because 
you know, people are going to buy them regardless. Yeah, I almost feel like people are wanting them, though, you know? That is true. The demand is there. People the, keep buying them. The demand's there, so they're going to do it. Yeah. And the fact that, like, if you're, like, a really heavy Padron lover, which Jared used to be, still a Padron lover, but not as heavy of a Padron lover. All, all these jabs there. You know what? I'm going to buy a Padron right after this. You won't. And you can watch me do it. But someone's going to see that. It's li- is it limited, though? Or is well, it just right limited now currently? it's limited. Yeah, it's currently. But so it's going to continue is what I'm yes. saying. So it's a fake limited for advertising. It's currently limited. Technically, all cigars are limited. Which I'm fine with the price point of 75 because at 50, they made $50. And I thought there would be 60. Every, every, every like 40, it was a 40 years the cheapest. And then you get the 45, it's a little bit more. Yeah, but I think it'd be cool if they made it $60. Yeah, I would try it for $60. I'd rather buy a unicorn than that. Dare I say? And they don't even exist. I'll still find a way. So yeah, we agree. I feel like Zach doesn't want to contribute contribute to this conversation. I can't. I don't get it. He disagreed with the unicorn I sh- thing. Ah. I shan't. Yeah. I just I'd never had it. Would I pay it? My question How- was, are companies intentionally price gouging? I mean, hundred percent. You look at. I mean, if you look at like, I feel like if you look at like the car market. Yes. Right. <laughs> so then, if you look at the cigar market. Yeah. We, and so. we did just discuss that cigars and cars are the same. Yeah, cars and cigars. Cars and cigars. Today, you missed yeah, it. You no, just missed it. I, <laughs> was it? T- no, it wasn't today. Today, Saturday. Oh yeah, morning. Yeah. Today, Saturday it. morning. We just got back. Uh, yeah, they're definitely price gouging. I mean, they're coming out these limited releases that end up being permanent releases. Uh, it's just the first edition. I, I'd rather them yeah. come out with it. It's like. You know, first run, first edition. So, yeah, if it's limited, don't bring it back or at least bring it back as a different cigar. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you know, 2023, 2024. First edition, not only, does it, not only does it make more sense, but it's actually something new. Yeah. We're going to bleep this whole part out so you can't take our idea, but... You're yeah. making me think about, like, getting a whole box of bases, aging them for years, and then putting an additional, like, you know, EST 2022 label on there. In like a special release like 10 years from now. Thanks. You did absolutely nothing to help us just now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> what? We'll talk about it after the podcast. Um, I don't get it. What happened? Nothing. I just, I just said. You know, you know what I don't like either is um, the cigar shops price gouging too. Because they know they're the only ones with it. I just fell victim to it. They, they know they're the only ones with it and they know they can charge it whatever they want. Especially with cigars like this. Well, so for example... When the Atabay, Atabay Black Ritos came out, MSRP is $60. So, Jared and I just happened to walk into a shop day one, and we bought it for 60 Then all these guys had a meeting and said, listen, we're the only ones that have it. Let's all sell it for $100. True story. Really? True story. And you heard it in the meeting? Like, you heard the meeting? I heard the meeting? Like, you heard them No, like- I went back later and said, why is it $100? And they said, oh... Because we all had all these guys had a meeting, and we all agreed to sell it for a hundred dollars. That is collusion, and that is illegal and price gouging. <laughs> <laughs> it is price gouging, though. Or maybe they could say they redacted it and just you know put the wrong price on there. But regardless, uh, it's public knowledge the MSRP is suggested to be sixty dollars. Is this like one of those instances, like with the Arizona iced tea? Where it's like you could report if they're selling it more than ninety nine cents. Like, can we do that? No, but they should do that. We could, we could make it a thing. Yeah, but then you got, you know, like I guess like I, I do kind of feel for the small shops that don't get as busy and they kind of do have to upcharge a little bit. True. Maybe there's a limit though. Yeah, because I mean, an, you know, what is it? An extra eighty percent? Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, the margins are there for them, you know. Yeah. Like, they're still making 30 bucks on the cigar. 
if it was MSRP. Then they just added an additional 40, so. So, yeah. Anyway. We briefly had a conversation recently about uh, our involvement with the Nextdoor app. One of Zach's favorite apps, actually. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Nextdoor is basically an app where you can connect with your local neighbors, whether it's in your neighborhood or like your city, basically, so you can keep track of what's going on. Uh, great app for Karens. Karens love it. Um, and I love that the Karens are on there because I like trolling. Mark should definitely download this app. I have that. Oh, cool. Um, but it's got my name, so I can't really troll that much. I don't care. Get another <laughs> account. You have tons of accounts. I don't know what you're talking about. Basically, we actually upload our articles on the next door. <laughs> and apparently that's against their guidelines. Shocker. So the articles have been taken down. But one of the articles that was up for a bit that got some traction and comments was the fact that Orange City put a smoking ban, like a public smoking ban, but cigars were not included. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. And the Karens got mad. Yep. And they said, it should be the same for everything. And I said, no. Fuck the Karens. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the first comment was cigars, aka blunts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was dumb. You commented back on that, I think. Yeah. I said someone doesn't know what they're talking about. It's pretty embarrassing, honestly. It's like tobacco versus drugs, I guess. What? Yeah, tobacco versus drugs. I get it. Cause because of the blunt thing? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Tobacco versus marijuana? Yeah, but it has, the, the article was about cigarettes and like vaping and stuff. Cigars were excluded. Oh, Pre- I'm saying it's embarrassing. Cigars. The comment makes no sense. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, the comment's that, embarrassing. Well, of course. No, I'm not saying you're embarrassed. I'm saying the comment was embarrassing. What if I was embarrassed? What if it was like secondhand embarrassment? We're here for you. Thank you. Can you give him a pat on the back? I can't reach him right now. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think obviously we're all in agreement. Good ruling. We've talked about this before. There needs to be a clear differentiation between cigarettes and cigars, vapes and cigars. I thought there was one between weed and cigars, but apparently the lines are not. The lines are still blurred for some people of the lower IQ. I get it. You use the tobacco only joke, as blunt wraps, but the only joke of this would be like if they're colorblind and they're like, oh, they're both brown, they're both green. You know, I don't know. Yeah, like you yeah. should have made that comment. Yeah. But the article got taken down, so. Yep. Next topic. Mark's itching. I'm itching. Mark I'm, is I itching. Got some, I this got is some, the main. I know Mark came prepared this time. I got some real insider information that actually opened up my eyes, actually. Is actually. I never actually met a swing voter. Actually. You ever met a you ever met a person that swing votes? I, I didn't think they existed. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I You're thought welcome. that they were no, not not not. I know, I know, I know. I thought that they were basically like people that were hired to go in and vote last minute and swing the election the other way. I didn't know that they were actually real people. Or cross state lines and like you know, register in two states yeah. last second. Like they tell me, hey, it's really close. Can you go vote for, you know, the Democrat because he's running behind? And I well, say, sure. Yeah. I, I met I knew I met a guy that voted for Mitt Romney, you know, back then, and then he voted for Biden against Trump. And his reasoning was because that his grandpa needed. So who did he vote for in between, Trump or? He didn't vote that year. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, he voted for Biden because his grandpa ha- was a disabled veteran. They needed the VA. Okay. So that's why he voted for Biden. And then we were talking. That makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're, he's like, yeah, my grandpa's dead now. So I don't really know. And I was like, so you're going to vote for him? He's like, I might, I might just not vote. I don't know. But his, so, he, so he's basically a never Trumper. No, no. He's not never Trumper, but he just doesn't really. So <laughs> I forgot to vote the last eight he years. He just doesn't vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> So he's talking to me and he's like, yeah, it's actually kind of surprising how like, you know, Kamala is like pretty like 
a lot more conservative on a lot of things versus other Democrats. And I was like, what do you, I was like, what do you mean? He's maybe, like, <laughs> maybe if you ask her for real, but obviously the persona she's running with is not. And he was like, he's like, well, she like wants fracking and things like that. I was like, <sighs> I was like, she does not want that. She just said that for this fucking election. Like in 2020, when you she said, ask them, can you, what's fracking? Oh, you don't know? Yeah. Do you? Fracking what? What is it? She supports fracking what? Just say, just say, say fucking. <laughs> so anyway, so I was like, I was like, I was like, she said it a million times that she doesn't, she wants to ban it and ban assault weapons. There's like hundreds of videos out there of her saying that. And she's going to flip flop. She's such a fucking chameleon. It's crazy. Well, it was very strange. I was shocked last night. She's like, uh, she's, why do you keep blaming me for trying to remove guns away? I'm a gun owner. So is Tim Walsh. Stop spreading lies. I was like, I've never heard of, uh, of her ever saying that. I, I, that's like crazy. My You're, security detail is a gun owner. <laughs> yeah. I, I, There's more videos of her wanting to get rid of guns than there is. Uh, Ber- Bernie Sanders said it himself. She's going to say anything to get elected. Yeah. It, well, what was weird to me is like, I really honestly don't. We've actually never really heard her speak before until like last night. Well, so, or yeah, she, had, five minutes. she had nothing on her website until last night. Yeah, and she copied and pasted Joe Biden's. Yeah. I literally, I checked this morning because I'm like, I wonder if she updated her website and she did. But she's not Joe Biden. Let's, let's be clear. Uh, we don't know that. Fact check. I've never yeah. seen them both in the same room at once. I will say she did come more prepared than I thought she was. Well, yeah, she had her earpiece on her, um, she had her see uh, the earring. The yeah, earring. I don't, I don't think it was an earpiece. I think it was. I don't think the earring was, but she yeah. probably still had one in her. She definitely looked way different than normal. I'd say. I, I think they probably snuck her the questions. Like, if I'm being honest, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. So everything was, her, it was canned well, you, responses. You know, you yeah. know, you know. She was, you know, she was practicing for a week with a Trump impersonator. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they need a Trump impersonator? <laughs> it's like. No, I, I, that's true though. But, I know it's true, yeah. but like, was like Shane Gillis or something like that. Probably Biden did the same thing. They probably, they probably, they probably no, uh, not Biden. Clinton did the same thing. Yeah, they had a, they hired a Trump impersonator to impersonate how Trump would respond to these. I questions. knew that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That'd be funny though if it was Shane Gillis and he was like throwing in like these weird questions to like chip her up and like no, but like yeah. you said, yeah, no one's gonna fucking vote for you. <laughs> canned responses, like all her responses, it's like she was. She gave a scripted answer, but she didn't actually listen to the question that was being asked. Oh my God. She had no real answer. No. So it was like, okay, this is question number three. Oh, I say this. And it's like, well, that wasn't really the question. She was like, they were like, are you proud of the economy? It's like, I grew up middle class. (laughs) (laughs) Yes or no, bro. (laughs) I mean, you've been lying this whole time. Why not just say yes? But yeah, I mean... That was something. Well, she started off with a lie. Well, My name is Kamala wasn't, Harris. Wasn't corrected. <laughs> she started off with the Project 2025 stuff. So it started off with a lie. She wasn't corrected. I she, feel like... She said that Trump wanted to abolish the Constitution. Actually, I don't feel... I, I think, I believe that when the Project 2025 thing is a great smear campaign. Because you're basically creating a website that someone else did not endorse just to fake endorse somebody else based on a book that was published on Amazon like one or two years ago by people we've never heard of just to say this person supports it. That means I can create a billion fake PAC websites or super PAC websites to support somebody who doesn't even exist who's not on the ballot yeah. or whatever. It doesn't what's make crazy, any sense. What's crazy is I've met people that actually think like that's what Trump stands for. In real life, too. Yeah. You no, know, in real life. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and you're like, like, they're like, you what? haven't seen Project 20. And here's the thing Project 2025, anyone who ever brings it up, they're a liberal. I've never heard a Republican bring it up unless they're referencing like a liberal that told them. Unless they're asking to what it is. Yeah. Like, that's I, the thing. No one actually knows what it is. Like, if you, they're like, oh, all these uh, conservatives are like, what is Project 2025? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't even begin to explain it to you because I don't care. You know, this brings me back to the good old days. Not, not, not so, not, not so good, but uh, with um, Aaron Burr and what Hamilton or no, not Hamilton. And, oh, and Jefferson ran for president. Was it Jefferson? I think it was Jefferson. Yeah. 
because Hamilton did the treasury stuff. Yeah, I, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, but Aaron Burr was like, I, I've mentioned this before, you know, he's like, he had no real ideas. He had nothing that he stood for. He just wanted to make people happy, saying what they need. Kind of like Kamala, you know, oh, we don't want fracking. And then people remember that. Then, oh, now well, new we're, people are listening. We're, we're in Pennsylvania now, so of course. Yeah, of course we want fracking. Yeah, so, you know, he lost that election because he had no real standing. All he had were other people's ideas and he just wanted power. And I feel like that's where Kamala is right now. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's why we have an electoral college, right? <laughs> it's to make sure that someone that isn't, you know, to an extent incompetent uh, becomes president. But Joe Biden, I know they weren't his own ideas, but at least he's always had uh, a, a plan because of Obama. And then plus, you know, prior times that he's run for president, um, he was like, quote unquote, the safe choice for like a lot of Americans because he's been there for years. Yeah. I'm not saying it's the right choice, but. And he's changed over the course of time, but it's never been so drastic like her where it's like yesterday I'm against fracking today. I'm for it. Or in the guns, whatever. But, um, yeah. Yep. I saw yeah. another thing that kind of opened my eyes. It was, uh, it was like the last 16 years were run by Democrats and you're expecting them to change everything right now. All right. 12 years out of the last 16 years. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And she's in the office, technically. Yeah. You can argue, yeah, they can't do much, but you're not actively. Pushing she, for these things anyway. And well, she was the deciding vote on a lot of things. That, that too. Yeah. yeah. When when she is put in the position to make a decision, essentially, it's well, the yeah. opposite of what she's saying now. Yeah. It's other it's other people's decisions that she's making. Yeah. You know, oh, hey, we need to do this. But yeah. and, and not even that, you know, people are like, oh, one, one presidency can't do much. But if you have a collective group of people that are always president one after another after another... Well, in a 10 year time frame, 15, 20 year time frame, they are able to impose a lot of control. Which is what yeah. she said at the end. She said, over, if, if I get elected, essentially over the next 10 to 20 years, we can change all these things because you're relying on then your party to stay in power. Maybe not president, but if you're still in power, like let's say in Congress and Senate, you can get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. yeah. What Trump said that I liked was he said, she's saying these things knowing that it won't pass in Congress. Mm. So she put us lying to you. True. So she could say, I tried, yeah. but it didn't go through. Just, just like the whole student loan thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, too, and then she brought up like, um, well, I tried to pass this border deal, but Trump killed the bill. And we all know that that bill was stuffed with a bunch, bunch of other BS, yeah. which is what they do every time. They say, oh, this is a border bill. But then there's stuff about like, for example, like higher tax rates and, you know, uh, higher tax rates on businesses. Uh, oh, we want to um, make it legal to eat cats and dogs. I don't know. Yeah. You notice they didn't correct her when she said that Trump wants to put a 20% uh, sales tax on everything? Yeah, no. They didn't fact check her at all. At all. She said yeah. the craziest stuff. Wait, it's one versus three up there. Pretty yeah. much. But what is it? One of you said, I think it was one of the news articles that said, Kamala only lied once. Trump lied 36 times. I said that, yeah. 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 And she won't agree to a Fox debate. No. That's never on any moderate, you know, news network. I, I guess what's the weirdest thing about this, this is the first time, and at least in me being alive, is that we have, you know, whether you vote left or right, for the people on the left, they're forced to vote for somebody that they did not put in there. Yeah. That did come up too. It, it's so strange to me. It's just so weird. Like, wouldn't you be complaining or up in arms? Be like, wait yeah. a minute, let's pick somebody else. We he said at least Biden got like 1,400 votes or whatever. This one got zero. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, if Trump got out and J.D. Vance was running, I'd be pissed. Exactly. Like, that's I, what, that's I like, what I'm saying. I, I, like the, I like J.D. Vance, but I didn't vote for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no decision to be made, at least from our standpoint. Exactly. Basically, well, they snuck her in there for the primary. Vote for Biden, Biden... Fakes drop out or drop out, and then they put in their chameleon. I understand what you guys are saying, but technically she was voted in with Biden. 
Right. Technically, you yes, know. it's true. So it's like she had some form of, you know, persuasion or votes in her pocket, you know, to get Biden in office. Um, yeah, but nobody, nobody picks a yeah, guy I'm not saying for it's, their not vice saying president. You're right. Especially now. But, you know, traditionally, it was like the vice president who, you know, would run for president next. You know what I mean? Like now, now is a different time, but, you know. But when she ran for president to begin with, no one chose her. They chose Biden. Right. And he, he chose right. her. So you're right. no one really yeah, chose no. her. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, you're right. No, no, no. So was, even if you do vote I was left, a little counter argument, you know. It kind of feels weird. They're forced. They're like, well, there's less than two months left. What do yeah, we do well, now? They, they didn't want to lose all that money. It was 40, you can't, it was, you can't, you can't transfer one super PAC to another? No. No. So there's, there was $40 million, I think, at the time. At or, the time, yeah. yeah. So it was $40 million at the time donated for the uh biden harris campaign and if anyone else except for harris became you know the nominee then all that money would be lost so the democratic party wouldn't have that but because harris is running it's still she's still like attached to that campaign she still gets that 40 because it's still the biden ticket kind of like what trump was alluding to it's still the biden harris ticket so to say but Biden's just not going to be the president. It's going to be, well, hopefully not, but it's intended to be Kamala. And now she has a new. Realistically, I mean, you know, they probably want her in there so they could lose. You know, they get the money. Mm. They did. They do the campaign, whatever. But that, I, I don't think that's who the Democratic Party wanted as a candidate. I just think no. their hands were tied. They had yeah. nothing to do. Um, that's why they're I mean, letting her. She basically. I think, ran, it's, I think it's exactly who they wanted. She ran unopposed at that point. No one came out and tried to steal votes or anything like that. But she didn't run unopposed. Huh? Right when Biden dropped out, uh, RFK Jr. was fighting for it. Yeah, but he was still an independent. He was running as an independent at the time. Yeah, because they didn't want because, to put him... Right. But I'm saying there's no other Democrat that came out trying to run against her. RFK doesn't count. What when Biden dropped out, he made a statement saying that um, he would take the ticket if they gave it to him, or if they, you know, yeah. And he actually tried taking it to court for yeah. it. No, I know that, but what I'm trying to say is, he's technically I'm counting him as third party. I mean, you can count him as third party all you want, but at the end of the day, he okay, was, yeah. he he's a Democrat. Sure, he literally wanted, speaking, yeah, you're right. He did want to run as a Democrat. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I'm talking about like. Gavin Newsom didn't come out of the woods or Michelle Obama. I know Jared was really hoping for that. Yeah, but they all have their <laughs> they all have their own ideas. You know, they didn't want someone with ideas. They wanted someone that they could control. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, it was a very interesting discussion, including cats and dogs. Cats and dogs are voting for Trump this year, so I've heard. So, so here's my thing, right? He says this, and immediately after, they're like, "We just got off the phone with so and so, who, like, with a the city representative yeah, or whatever, the city manager of Springfield or whatever." Yeah, he's like, like, <laughs> like, of course he wouldn't want to say that. That's happening. Well, it's like the governor of Colorado being like, "There's nothing going on in Aurora, or where, wherever the heck the Venezuelan really like, it was." Yeah, she's like, "No, there's a, what?" So yeah, it's like, oh, we called one person. Who is going to be essentially our source? Even though they had a whole town hall meeting about it, where people were yeah. going up, and immediately on Twitter, all these videos were coming out. Yeah, body camera footage, town hall meetings, uh, yeah, everything. There's police body camera footage of you know legit like yeah they the- were eating that cat. They chopped its head off and then yeah. Which if I was Trump and I started talking about that and. They're like, they're like, oh, we just got off the phone with the city manager and he denies these claims or whatever. He's like, well, I've seen it on TV. Roll the clips. And then he like, he should like look over and then like look back and be like, that's for TikTok later. Uh, <laughs> I totally would have done that if I was him. Meme template. I don't know. I just feel like there's something wrong. Yeah, I just don't yeah, feel I there's, there's, there's something, something wrong. There's something wrong. Can you be more specific? Because I agree. I just don't think, I just can't believe um, if you vote left, they're really going to vote for Kamala Harris. You don't have a choice. Mm, I don't know. I hate when they bring up the jobs thing. 
They're like, you lost this many jobs. We created this many jobs. Like, okay, like there wasn't a fucking pandemic going on and businesses had to close. Well, you not know? only that, they, they, she only, or the administration only created all these government jobs. They weren't actually helping private citizens. Well, they said they created this many jobs, but they were, they were bounce back jobs. They were jobs people got back after. But a lot of them were just government jobs. Yeah, but a lot of them were also people just getting the regular job back. Yeah. If, yeah, if, that shouldn't count. Yeah. Like, like half that's of our, what they're counting, though. I know, but it yeah, shouldn't. Like, like, for example, like all our servers got laid off. You know? And yeah, they and got the job. Yeah, gets back in office. They get their job back. That's a new job. Exactly. Yeah, quotes. For the listeners. Oh, yeah. I mean, and Trump Trump did say that. He's like, those are all bounce back jobs. Like, they were jobs that were going to come back. Because, I mean, we talked about the other day, like in Michigan, Michigan was completely shut down. Like, no restaurants open, no nothing open. You literally just have to sit on your lease doing yeah. shit. Well, too, let's say you get laid off. And then, like, a year later, they're like, you know what? We want you back. You're not going to go around and say, guys, I got a new job. You're going to say, yeah. I got hired back at my old job. The yeah. same job. It's all semantics. Plus, you know, if, yep. I, if I was Trump, to be honest with you, I would have mentioned like all these layoffs that are that have been going on for the year. You know, you have you have government contractors laying off people. You have Google laying off people. Facebook, uh, what Nvidia? Their market just you know their stock price just crashed. I'm sure they're going to lay off people. Um, Actually, Nvidia runs a very tight job pool. They're like. The amount of people that work for that company is very small compared to like... Oh, that's good. I mean, that's yeah. how a company should be run. Yeah. But, you know, you have all the... Well, I mean, this one's Elon Musk, but speaking of like a tight job pool, they cut employees by 80% at Twitter and it runs beautifully. He gets updates out. He's been updating, you know, X... Uh, Continue, continuously to for large formatted videos for you know uh, uh, short videos for everything. Um, he needs 4K though. He does need 4K, but or at least 2K. But but even then, he cut his workforce 80, percent and he's still putting out good product. You know, <laughs> Facebook did the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they changed a lot with Twitter. Bring back Vine, <laughs> or at least they added a lot. That, that's what I'm saying. They yeah. added a lot with only 20% of the original m- employees. Well, Fa- Facebook the, too. I mean, Facebook, you know, now that they're not censoring anything, you know, or so Mark Zuckerberg well, says, yeah. but it, they don't, they don't need that many people. Yeah. No one talks about how he came out and said that, uh, Obama, not Obama, whatever, uh, Biden, everybody was making him, you know, do it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he openly talked about it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he sent out an email or something. Yeah, but like, but yeah, no one's gonna talk about that. Yeah, yeah. If he was real smart, he'd take the government to court for it. Yeah, maybe he's waiting until Trump gets elected. Because that, that's an attack on our uh, Second Amendment, First Amendment, First Amendment. <laughs> Indirectly, an attack on the Second Amendment. What's funny too, what we just saw today. I I don't have the full context, but the videos and images. Of Biden putting the Trump hat on. Oh yeah, that's funny. And then he took a picture with a bunch of kids wearing like Trump gear and stuff, and he's like, "That's that, hilarious. yeah, yeah." He they said Very he did strange. that to show bipartisan support for the country or whatever. He probably just didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was telling Jerry this earlier. I feel like he was like doing it in a joking manner, not like thinking about how it's gonna look. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. Yeah, like, he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, he probably just does not care anymore. No, yeah. And someone so, was saying, like, oh, I'm sure like his, you know, his team and his handlers like could care less now because what's the point? He's essentially not there anymore. Yeah, you know, and she kept trying to distance herself last night from Biden, you know. So. Well, unless it was a, a quote unquote positive thing that she's like, Yeah, you know, Biden and I, we work to do this, we work to do that. But then when something's bad, it's like, no, I, I, you know, I, however, she did say that, um, she stood by Biden's decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Yeah. But what did they ask her if she thinks it was a mistake or something like that? The way they did it. Right. And then she says, I stand by his decision. Yeah. So she essentially said, no, not a mistake. She said, look, the taxpayer money is not going to Afghanistan anymore. Cool. What about Ukraine? What about, uh, Israel? Yeah. And I don't, 
At least from what I see, most people don't want all that money going out to Ukraine. No. Of course not. Not when there's stuff that we could use it for here. Yeah. Zach says he's going to vote for her because she's going to give a... 25K? Yeah. 25K towards the house? Yeah. That's just going to make houses $25,000 more expensive. <laughs> and she said she give out 6000 per child you have, too. I am young and stupid, okay? <laughs> I will vote. So for that, me want that house. does that does nothing for. Her. <laughs> hey, uh, we talked about it here before, like the stimulus checks, twelve hundred dollars to everyone just means everything is going to go up twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, and look what happened: housing prices went up, uh, rent prices went up. If, well, if, well, not if everyone wanted, got that. If but. they wanted to stop corporations from buying up all these houses, what they should just impose is a bigger tax if you own over a certain number of houses. As a company or as a person? Oh, that's what um. Shoot, who, either either or. Who just said that? Yeah, then how do you do like shell companies, trusts? Charlie Kirk? Brothers, family. What? You can bypass that easily. How, how do you handle that? No, basically- it, It's mainly to stop the big company. So like, let's say you own over 20 houses. Yeah, Charlie Kirk, actually. I literally just saw a video on this. Oh, yeah. Like like his, uh, someone asked him, actually, like uh, some super that, liberal kid. That's been my idea for a long time. You could ask Alex. Yeah. Talk about it. Or Jared. I remember. I don't remember. So someone asked him, uh, how would you deal with housing prices? And he's like, easy. I would stop companies like BlackRock from purchasing single family homes. But and then he's like, he's like, how would that do anything? He's like, well, if, or no, he's like, are you going to seize their properties? He's like, no, but I'll make it illegal for any business over, you know, a hundred worth over a hundred billion dollars, you know, or whatever. You have a hundred billion dollars in assets to own single family homes yeah, but for how, investment. How do you do that? Easy legislation. No, I was just telling him like if I have something in hidden trusts or LLCs, I could like string them together, not string them together, and hide them. It's so simple to do. Yeah, the government. You, you're can, not, the government you, could see. You're it. not hiding it from the government. You, you're literally even if you make all those trusts, your your corporations, your LLCs, you're not hiding it from the government. That'd be like saying, oh, I could have ten corporations own ten different things, and I never have to pay taxes on it. The government knows yeah. you have it. Yeah, but you, st- if- you still have to file a tax. You, you still have to file your taxes. You're going to be able to see everything. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like, what if like BlackRock, you know, gives me money to buy a house in my name and then when I die, my will goes to BlackRock. Well, then the house, when you die. It'd still be illegal for them to own it. Yeah. So they just sell it immediately, like partition sale? It'd probably be, probably just go to the, the state. I guess. And that would free up a lot of houses in the market. That probably caused a house crash. Well, look at, I mean, yeah. I mean, look at Zillow. Like Zillow tried buying houses. I, they still own a bunch. When when all the houses were going crazy, they were buying every single house that went on the market. And then they would try to sell them themselves. So, you yeah. know, or rent them or and whatever. I, I might be wrong on this, but Zillow was trying to sell houses on their own without realtors. And they got sued by the MLS. Yeah. So would you limit the number of houses per LLC? What? Like how would you limit? How would you count the houses that you own? A, so, like a corporation or an individual company. So, like if you have, let's say, let's say it's illegal for a corporation to own past twenty houses. So, let's say you have a shell company. That's you're still gonna have to file that on your taxes. So that yeah, but by that big cash, corporation. What, what are the taxes? Property taxes. Yeah. You can make whatever ta- kind of tax you want. You said you're filing tax for the house. Like, what do you mean? When you file, when you file your taxes, you got to put your house on there. I know, but so like, so you own fifty percent of LLC, and that LLC also is owned by fifty percent of a corporation. It kind of bubbles up, so you're gonna count it all the way to like the main source, and be like, wait a minute, the main yeah, exactly twenty up here. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly, exactly what they exactly do. You don't just stop. like for example. All right, I'll give you an example. Right, uh, Coleman Aerospace was a uh, defense contractor in Sand Lake. They handled um, defense missiles. You know, for the government, whatever. Coleman Aerospace got bought out by Aerojet Rocketdyne. Yeah. Right? They still <laughs> kept the Coleman Aerospace LLC because that's what it is. Now, L3 Harris comes in and buys out Aerojet Rocketdyne. So now you have three levels uh, of LLCs that, you know, weren't transferred because, uh, you know, they don't want to lose their contract or they want to keep it separated. So they're able to control funding. On if Coleman Aerospace deserves this, or if another division and L3 Harris deserves it, whatever. 
those are all still counted under Aerojet or under uh, L3 Harris's taxes and businesses that they own. Kind of like how if AT&T goes and buys Spectrum, it'll be denied because then it will be turned into a monopoly. Yeah, yeah. They're unable to buy Spectrum. Even if even if they kept everything separate, they kept how Spectrum works, it uses the cable lines, doesn't use the phone lines, they still would be unable to purchase it because it would get blocked. Yeah, but still, like, if he owned 50 houses... Okay. And you own 50 houses, and you're the only person in LLC, you're the only person in LLC, but you're related, and you still work for a different company, how do you do that? Uh, I, I, they, would you, it would be fine to do it'd that. It would be fine, I wouldn't yeah. be worth over $100 billion. So you're Come, the money or the number of houses? It's it's the money. If you if you if a company, I think it should be the number of houses. Well, that's fine too. But if a company makes over a hundred billion, this is what Charlie Kirk says. Like this is his opinion. If a company makes over a hundred billion dollars or five hundred billion dollars or whatever the case may be, like their their gross revenue, they shouldn't be able to buy single family homes. I guess, yeah, that makes sense. Right. So, I mean, that's just that's just one step. So it doesn't to help affect it. like young entrepreneurs that are buying up houses to try and make money. Yeah, they yeah, have to I, buy. I, mean, a yeah, bunch I don't, of I don't houses. disagree. I'm just saying there's ways. I feel like there's ways around it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's always going to be loopholes, but it's still going to be harder to do. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and even you got to think about it. If you're if you own 200 properties, you know, 200 properties that you manage. You're not going to be you're not going to be grossing that much money. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be grossing a hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would be a multimillionaire. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you're not going to be making that much money. The the issue is and these still mega companies. It'd be based on assets too. You're not making multi million dollars in some yeah. cases. You just yeah. own these you places. Own. Yeah. You get it now. Yeah, I'm just saying you could divide it up like over multiple things. I see what you're saying, but that's just stopping a common person from knowing that you own all those things. That's not stopping the government from knowing that you have all those things. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm just saying like say if you're, you know, like your parents bought all these properties, they're like, wait a minute, we can't buy anymore. We're going to start putting on our, your name, then your name, then your name. You know, it's like you keep dividing it. Yeah, but it wouldn't affect them. I get it. Yeah, but it wouldn't affect them. It wouldn't affe- affect the normal investor. Yeah, the normal person, yeah. That's all. That's the whole point. You don't want it to uh, uh, affect the normal individual, you know, or the guy who makes money off of property management, or you know, like Tavistock, for example. You know, you, you don't want it to to pe- You don't want it to do it to people who are actually developing these areas, these large areas. You want to do it to the people who are, you know, screwing over the common person. So if you implement this in like 2024, 2025. Does like Zillow have to like sell off the properties, or they just can't acquire anymore? Uh, I don't know. It depends. They would have to I sell mean, them off, yeah, or or pay a heavy tax. That would make it not worth it for them to keep it. That makes sense. Which in turn sell it. Yeah, I mean, just like Obamacare. Obamacare was mandated at one point, and uh, we should start writing our own legislation and start publishing it. I'm about to write a book for views. For views, why Trump fired me? It's gonna be the book title. <laughs> that would sell. That was hilarious, actually. When he was like, he was like, "Yeah, of course, these people wrote books about me, bad things about me. I fired them." <laughs> what employee says good things about you after you fire them? It's true. true. Yeah, it's true. I fired people for insubordination. Dude shows up in a suit three days later, thinking that he like. I, I, the suit he came in, I thought he just signed a multi-million dollar deal. I swear. Did that happen to you or did that happen to me? I'm pretty sure <laughs> we were both there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Besides what we talked about. Oh, yeah, because you fired him. But then he came in to get his, pick, his check. Yeah, yeah, Mark is basically Donald Trump. He fires people. You're fired. You're fired. Yeah, Mark fired the most amount of people. And then I got blamed for it. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> They're like, man, Zach's a fucking dick. I fired like a handful. Zach fired, Zach fired one person. Zach was the <laughs> most kid, passionate yeah. about it, though. Yeah, I fired one person, and I felt bad about it. Don't care. Feelings don't matter. What were some of the best moments funny. besides what With we Jumanis? talked about? Oh, that too. I was gonna say I'll tell you the story of when I fired her, though. She's like, <laughs> "Don't dox her." Here. She tells no, no, no. She tells a customer, Jane Smith. A customer asked her, "How are the mozzarella sticks?" 
right? And then she's like, she's like, oh, they're horrible. Don't get them. <laughs> so then they're like, oh, okay. So now they're questioning everything on the menu. So they end up getting something. They loved it. They're regular, you know, or they ended up being regulars. But after that, I took her to the back and I sat her down. I'm like, hey, like, why'd you say, <laughs> why'd you say that you hated them? And she's like, well, they just don't taste good. I'm like, okay, but shouldn't you say like, you know, uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of them, but I like this better, you know? And then she's like, yeah, I guess I could say that. And then I'm like, now let me ask you a question. Like, when did you have them? She's like, oh, I had them last night. I'm like, oh, the leftover mozzarella sticks that we had? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, when did you eat them? Like, did you eat them right when you got home? Two no. And she's like, she's like, well... They sat in my car for like three hours and then, then I brought them home and then I ate them like another hour later. So it's probably like five hours they're sitting in my car. And I'm like, so don't you think that they would taste different fresh versus like sitting in your car for five hours? And then she started crying and then that's when I felt bad. <laughs> And that's then, the problem you make them cry when you fire them but i made uh, yeah we ended up getting rid of her like i think it was that day but i made mozzarella sticks i fired her we fired her <laughs> <laughs> we, i made mozzarella sticks for her to try and she's like oh these are good i'm like yeah i know i eat them all the time yeah i know go find a new job <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a lot of stuff well i, I actually only felt bad about firing one person but that's about it. Yeah, single mom. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> single mom. With four single, kids. single mom with four kids, and she came in three minutes late. And I just don't want to. Four wanna, kids. <laughs> her car just got repoed. Yeah, I just don't want to start that president. You know, of <laughs> people be three minutes late. <laughs> we let one person be late. Everyone's gonna be late. Yeah, actually, that's a lie. She just annoyed me, so I fired. No, I'm joking. Imagine. <laughs> So when you, when you fire people, are you serious or are you always smiling? Uh, I, I, serious, I guess. I don't know. Marco's Marco's like serious. And then he's like, yeah, we're going to have to let you go. And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then, then he's like, he's all right. He's like, yo, you will not believe <laughs> what just happened. Like, <laughs> he starts going, telling everyone. <laughs> Actually, I did fire one person. And they were like, they were like, oh, okay. Like, so should I? So like, how long can I come back? And I was like, you. I was like, no, like you're not coming back. And they were like, okay. So Mark's like, I stay, you go. <laughs> they're like, they're like, so like, when are you gonna um schedule me then? I was like, no, you're not getting scheduled. And she's like, oh, okay. So like, how is this gonna work then? Like, when am I gonna work? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Here's how it works. You leave, find another job. I was like, no, no, you're not like poor here anymore. And they're like, oh, why didn't you just say that? I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. You're trying to be so nice. Yeah, yeah. They'd be like passive aggressive about it. It's like, okay, here's what's going on. (laughs) You ever notice Mark does that? (laughs) No. Was that Mark? You never noticed that? No. Like, if it's It's the pre laugh, (laughs) it's the pre or post laugh. He goes, (laughs) 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 <laughs> I did that See? on purpose. Did that on purpose. No, he, yeah, he actually does do that. Everyone's going to be watching like all the episodes now. <sighs> Best moments from last night or Wednesday night, Tuesday night, whenever that happened. Um, I had uh, some lamb chops. That's probably my best moment. Oh, dude, I had pizza from Uncle Peter. Oh, yeah? Dude, fire. Dang, when did you go to Melbourne? Uh, Uncle Mike went and then he brought it back. Oh, nice. So, nice. he was sitting in his car for five hours? And it was still good. <laughs> still good. Yeah, good pizza doesn't go bad, man. It's true. I always say you judge. I I judge pizza by the next day. On the next day, yeah, and when you reheat it, because a pizza could taste good fresh, like right out of the oven. It should taste fresh. Yeah, but like not a lot of pizzas are gonna taste bad fresh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the next day is when you see if they have good good or bad cheese. Well, that's the same thing with like coffee. If you have it super cold or super hot, it doesn't taste like lukewarm coffee. That's when the most flavor is. Yeah, exactly. You can tell if a coffee is good or bad if it's lukewarm. Exactly. Yeah, like I just had cold coffee today. The heater on the coffee machine, you know, it wasn't heating. So <laughs> it still brewed though. It wasn't on. It brewed. Yeah, I don't think it was on. Yeah. I poured a cup, took a sip, 
it was cold. I tasted his coffee cold. And I never really liked it hot, but I tasted his coffee cold. And it, it was absolutely terrible. Absolutely. I just spilled it out. Couldn't do it. Exactly. Everything tastes better if it's really hot, really cold. Yeah. It was a Katy Perry who said it. You're hot and you're cold. Yeah. She did say that. Yeah. yeah. She sang it, actually. She sang it. But last night, best moments were sound familiar. <laughs> that, that was funny. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm talking. Sound familiar? That, 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 that was, was for TikTok. Yeah, that, that was for TikTok. Yeah. That, no, I actually think he just said that like naturally, and then he thought of because he, like he, he said thought that about it in the moment, and then he paused. He's like, "Sound familiar?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he said that, and he thought about. It. He's like, "Wait a minute, this is good." Yeah. Uh, I kind of wish they didn't meet the mics. I just let them go. I, I wish they didn't meet. I, I hate this thing. Well, they meet. To be mics. fair, they meeted Trumps. They didn't meet hers. That they they meet mics and they couldn't ask each other questions. So did you see? He's like, he's like, why don't you ask her this? You know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You're right. I did notice that. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I saw that tweet. It was like no one wanted the debate. They argued the whole time. I'm like, isn't that, <laughs> isn't that part of the debate? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that like the whole point? <laughs> Bros never in debate class in high school. I mean, me neither. But I know how it works. <laughs> Yeah, but if you don't um, like allow them to ask each other questions, then you're essentially giving all the power to those those moderators yeah. on who on what they want to you know. I will say they did let them uh, respond quite a bit. I was surprised about that. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't think they would have let Trump respond, but he just kept going, so they had to. Yeah, they folded. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he he would start talking and then and then uh, they'd yeah, want, they they would try to cut him off they yeah. try to cut him off and he would just keep talking and then they're like okay one minute it was funny though because a couple times he'd do that and then they'd let Kamala do it and then he'd do it again and then she'd try and they're like no we can't sorry we can't she's like no but what and like, then, we, well, and then it, she brought it up on the next question then yeah, they asked yeah. her a question and she automatically went back to I, I want to allow fracking like and I'm like bro that was five minutes ago <laughs> like yeah I like when um, they asked him uh about the whole uh, National Guard thing. And he was like, Pelosi denied it. And then they're like, we're not talking about Pelosi. We're talking about you. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Like I didn't deny it. Pelosi did. She, like, she's the one in charge of that. You know? Yeah, but you didn't do it. <laughs> Bro wanted fucking Trump to walk outside with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be a third debate, you think? Or I guess a second debate with... I doubt it. 2.5. Who, who host, she didn't even answer that question. Who hosted the first debate? Um, CNN. So CNN, then ABC. Yeah. So now it would be Fox's turn to host it. Nah, it'd have to be MSNBC. They can't do a Fox debate. I know, she she be, didn't have a Fox debate. No, I know, I know. But that's why, that's why I think there won't be another debate. If MSNBC does it, maybe. But I really think they should host one on like Twitter. I know that would never happen, but... Yeah. Yeah. I still want Joe Rogan to host one. I, I want... I want to... I want his format. I think I really think like his style of format. So, what do you think about psychedelics? No, I really think his style of format on um, and having them both would be the best because it, the way he he's a great co- conversationalist. So, yeah. Well, listen, listen. Um, they're not Dana, asking Dana. Listen, <laughs> they're not asking other people. See, I just hate how. They're, they're doing these debates because they're not allowing other people to, they're not allowing each other to ask questions. They're muting the microphones. It's like no live audience. Make it a true debate. <clears throat> like they're not debating each other. They're doing two separate interviews in the, in, in the same room. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're getting asked questions. They tell an answer and then yeah, it, it's annoying. It's I think like, that's what more people want though. What? Not this, a real debate. Style. Yeah. Like I, who's I, more I people it. though? I hate it. It's I, not. People, I don't like this. Style. I absolutely hate it. I wouldn't. Don't call it a debate. Pe- it's not a debate. People, people that aren't at this table. <laughs> I'm just saying, because everyone always complains about they're talking over each other, they're just fighting, and then they're like, okay, well, let's do it this style where, like you said, it's more of an interview. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying more people want this style. Yeah, yeah. it's dumb, and that's though. because people only le- a lot of people only learn when they because they watch the debates and they don't watch anything else. They're just like, oh, the debate's on. Now I could finally learn what these guys are about. Yeah, but but the, the issue isn't... You're, you're right, though. 100%. I know. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why debates are always big. But the issue isn't, you know, them not... Or the issue isn't them talking to each other or the, uh, them talking over each other. 
The issue is a moderator not being able to control them. And they're not getting any good moderators to actually control them. No, I agree. If you had, if you had a solid moderator, I mean, like Joe Rogan. Because that's what they want, yeah. though. They, they, they want to control the information in their way. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But I just think that's dumb. I think that's, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not good for like the American people. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because you want to see these people, how they are. They're, and that's the whole thing about debates too. Truth comes out when you're arguing with each other. Yeah. You know, she would get pissed off and just start, you know, they'd be start talking over each other. That's fine. But like sh- stuff would be said that in the heat of the moment, in the heat of the moment that people will hook onto and be like, I can't vote for her. I can't vote for him because yeah. look how he handles this. He's not coherent enough to uh, uh, speak clearly during a heated situation, you know, or with Kamala, you know, she's not, she can't do it because when Trump said this, she just got flustered and then, you know, like stopped, you know, lost her train of thought. Like that's what people need to see. I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree with Mark. You should have a, you know, like someone like Joe Rogan ask a question. And just have both mics on and just let them go. Have it be a, a conversation. Have a conversation. Where they're just going back and forth. And see who wins. I agree. And be very obvious. What Joe Rogan should do is just, if they don't want to do a debate on there, interview them both. Mm. And then drop them both on the same day. Exactly. Well, it's funny you say that. I'm glad you brought that up. Because, like, you know, Lex Freeman, Trump was on there. Theo Vaughn, Trump was on there. Uh, Milk Boys, Full Sin, Trump was on there. He does all these individual interviews. He's on uh, uh, Impulsive. He does all these interviews. I know exactly what would happen, though. Kamala would come in and be like, you blindsided me. I'm not doing this. And Trump would be like, well, this was a pleasant surprise. Too bad she walked away. Very sad. I think we were talking about this earlier when uh, she was, they asked her, like, or he, I think he asked her, like, or he was like, you never met Putin. And she's like, I met Zelensky five times. Yeah, I didn't understand. Not the same person. It, it was like, yeah, real deflection there. That was kind of strange. She might be Joe Biden. Joe Biden makes him up. And Zelensky might be Putin. And she never denied being a Marxist. True. True. I just, just I, the canned responses were just so stupid. I mean, like, he's like, oh, yeah, Putin endorsed her right before this. And then she started talking about Zelensky. So it's like, I don't understand. Like, she didn't answer any of the questions. Oh, yeah. She said that all the... um Dictators wanted Trump to win, and he's like, well... Yeah, so if Putin's the bad guy and he endorses Kamala, isn't that a red flag? She made fun of him for, like, having flattery with Kim Jong-un or something like that. It made no I, sense. I just think it's crazy. I mean, it, it, more truth is coming out, right? But, like, when Trump was president, you know, the whole Democratic Party was saying every other country looks at us as an embarrassment, uh, you know, a country that's not strong, uh, you know, all they look at Trump like he's weak, like this and that, whatever. And people bought it. They bought into it. They believed it 100%. But as someone who would go to Europe during that time, I mean, you know, yeah, we went to Europe. Everyone loved Trump. Literally every person that we met, you know, were like, oh, my God, I love Trump. I love what he's doing for America. That's awesome. Like, you know, they're supporting our country. They're like, you know, people from Switzerland, from so Croatia. So from- we should elect a Trump in our country. It was also weird because she made fun of him saying that Poland doesn't like him. When Poland was one of the first countries in 2017 to welcome him. Mm-hmm. It, it was and like adopt, said, adopt his immigration policy, yeah, essentially. Yeah. It, it was just so crazy. It was so strange. The moral of the story is she has to lie about everything because that's the only glimpse of hope that she has. Yeah. I Hopefully just, enough people believe it. I wish she brought up her fake accents. <laughs> yeah, like, like when, yeah. they, when they when they said the whole like oh like well you said she's Indian but she's part black he should have brought that up. Well, he did. That, he, that said was, it, he said he didn't know. I don't know what she is. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, but yeah. that, that would have been a great time to bring that up. Elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. Which I think that's where Trump lacks. Is he doesn't he's not very good at elaborating. Sometimes I think he wants to get enough stuff. He, he wants to get stuff off his mind, and he's probably sometimes too focused on that. And sometimes he does like respond in a way. That relates to it, but sometimes he's just focused on getting his point across yeah. that he doesn't realize there's an op- another opportunity. Yeah, because because yeah. even uh, like when that got brought up, and he's like, he's like, I mean, she could be whatever she wants. Like, you know, that's if she wants to be black and she wants to be Indian, that's fine. You know, but you know, like I j- just remember the switch. I remember when she was Indian, and then I remember when she was black. You know, it's like 
Like, he was just so focused on, like, getting that out, I think. I would have fucking died laughing if he brought up her uh, Wikipedia. True. It, uh, if you, if, switch. If you go to that Internet Archive thing, you could see, like, all that was on there was Indian. Indian American, Indian this, first Indian whatever. Yeah. And then now it's all, it switched all black. It got changed 23 times. Yeah. yeah. She's a transracial. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> well, it's just like, you know, you're American, you're American, American until you start an Albanian cigar company. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're transracial. Trans- I think the debate was very strange. I don't know. I think there's more to come next few weeks. Yeah, I don't think very weird. I don't think there'll be another debate, which sucks. I would hope so. I'd want to see another one. I'd like to see two more from them. Yeah. Yeah, the first one doesn't count. Yeah. I mean, unless it does, unless they are the same person. But same she's same not, administration. So. Same ticket. Same core values. Same dumbassery. So we're going to talk real quick about how to prepare for either one of these presidencies. Hypothetically, Kamala Harris lies her way to the Oval Office. What do you do? What do you do from now and then? Now nah, keep right. living. <laughs> Buy a gun. Many. Buy extra toilet paper. Extra toilet paper. Save <laughs> your money. Hide your money. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you honest advice. I'm not even going to listen to this, right? I'll give you honest advice. Kamala becomes president. Invest in defense companies. Mm -hmm. More wars are started in uh, Democratic leadership than in a Republican leadership. And more funding is actually, I don't know if you knew this, more funding is issued to our defense budget during Democratic leadership. Let me stop you right there. The Democrats are the party of peace. So how does that make sense? I don't know. It's just the truth. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Where's the fact checker? We have to think on that one true if trump becomes president invest in everything else Mm, interesting very smart very wise not financial advice you know it's funny they brought the whole manufacturing thing is that um we actually have like buddies in the manufacturing business and uh they were raking in the cash when trump was president there was so much going on because he was building up the military pretty much yeah What about Trump? What do you do? Invest in everything else. And you're chilling. And you're chilling. Go, keep, keep living, as Mark says. Go get a car. Go buy a house. Go travel. I'll probably uh, light up a base of cigar. Have a triple shot of McCallan 18. November 5th, 2024. Yeah. Unless it take, you know, two months to keep counting the votes again. So, I don't know. My plan is I'll be in Europe, and then based on how the election goes, I may come back or I may not. Kind of see what happens, you know? Okay, (laughs) okay. I'm getting the grand tour. I'm like, "Hmm, which country should I stay in? I think think his girlfriend's getting him about, or fiance is getting him about the whole uh, want to move to Paris thing. (laughs) Heck no. Or England? Does she want England? Oh, no. She likes London, which is like, I'm like, just turn on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I... if anything, it'd be Eastern Europe, but I'm not planning on doing that. Romania. So when are you leaving? Are you going to vote before you leave? Obviously. Mail in? <laughs> early, early. early Mail in vote every day. No, I'm going to go early vote, obviously. Which I usually do anyway. When does early voting start? I always early vote. It's like it's October. Yeah, it's like two weeks before. Why would you wait? So, you know, I like standing in line and being, you know... Looking over, hey, can I copy your, uh, you know? What are the answers? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love when they started doing, like, the privacy sheets when you put in the machine. You know? Like, yeah. It's like, it's like oh, just, just a little bit. I will say this, bit. too. Like, Not me, bro. I'm com- like, whoop. <laughs> when it comes to voting, don't vote for someone if you don't know who it is. Yeah, just leave it blank. Don't vote by party. Yeah, just leave it blank. Don't vote for some guy because, you I know, agree with that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm pretty, um, did you see, uh, uh, they tried allowing, uh, I think, Florida... One of the Florida amendments um, on this ballot is they're going to put party affiliation for school board. Did you see that? I think it's Amendment 6. It wasn't already? No. No, they took it off in like the 80s or 60s or something. No, mm. earlier than that, I think. 
let's just say the 60s they took it off in the 60s where party affiliation doesn't get put yeah, into okay. you know uh, uh mm-hmm. the school district or whatever yeah i think that's more actually might be more important now than than ever which is kind of crazy um but I, I feel like it has more to do with like uh you know, different country, there are different parties have different values, different home values. And That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, someone, someone who you would want to be in charge of, you know, your children's schools is someone, you know, who you would want with similar home values, right? So, in my that case, being said, yeah, you should always still do your research and look at the person. No, I'm an old, I'm an old voter. I vote red down the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never know, though. There's bad Republicans and there's bad Democrats. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Nikki Haley. <laughs> exactly, she, bro. Oh, my God, dude. That pissed me off. Was it, was it Nikki Haley that was doing the um, um, ag- agriculture thing? Yeah. She was a, yeah. Holy shit, dude. She pissed me off. When she won, and then the first thing she does... Put her face on is, every gas. Yeah. You know, like the... <laughs> when they measure the gas pumps, you know, to make sure that they're actually dispensing the correct amount. It's a scale, technically, yeah. so... All of, every scale in the state has to be approved by the state to make sure that they're not fucking you. And uh, Nikki Haley sends a group of you know people to go redo all the stuff, all the pumps, all the scales, whatever. And you just see a picture of her on a gas pump with a field in the back. You know, Nikki Haley, commissioner, or whatever of agriculture. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And right yeah. as soon as I saw that, I'm like, she's prepping for a race. She's getting free advertisement so she could prep for something else. Yeah, and she spent a lot of taxpayer money on that, too. Which is insane. We ha- we've had the same sticker for years. It's just the seal, you know, uh, Department of Agriculture, this is approved. You know, that's it. And then she spent all this money designing a sticker, implementing it out. Was it Nikki Haley, though? I'm pretty sure. Or, yeah, it was Nikki Haley, yeah. I, is, I agree with that. It's Florida, it's just right? Say, it's yeah, just say, yeah. She's not from Florida. I'm pretty sure it's Nikki Haley. I think it looks like her. It's not uh, Nikki Haley. This is a first time ever live cigar guy fact check. <laughs> Usually we're always right. I do it all the time. I always look at when we talk about stuff. Yeah, but he's fact checking someone else. He's fact checking himself. Lady. Interesting developments going on. <laughs> I have to edit this out. I just want to avoid Nikki Fried. Nikki Fried. Oh, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, Nikki yeah. Fried. Look at. Oh yeah, look at it. It was just fucking. Picture. I just wanted to avoid the comments. It wasn't that picture, but. But no, think about it. Where have I seen this lady before? Oh yeah, on every gas pump. I'll vote for. Her. Well, it just brings she she familiarity else. to it. Yeah, exactly. They should, keep the, they should just keep the sticker the same. You know, USDA approved gasoline. Oh yeah, why does it have to be political now? What? <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Look at this. You yeah. all agree? Look. No. This this yeah. sticker. Can we look at yeah. this? You remember this? You remember that sticker? Or were you in California? Can I we, think it's California. Point? Hold it up really oh. close. It'll get it. Regardless, I was in California or not. How could I see that sticker? What? How would I ever see that sticker? Yeah, because you were in California, you wouldn't be able to. Anyway, the point. Anyway, yeah, that that sticker. Oh, here's a, here's a comparison. Oh yeah, she put her name on one, and then she put her. Uh, what, what did this happen? What years did this happen? Oh, uh, this was, I don't know, the last election. So. Yes, yeah, so I was here. He doesn't get gas. That's the I thing. I know, that's what I'm trying to get you to oh, see. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank that's you. Right. I forgot. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Uh, you ever get a public testable. sub? <laughs> you ever get cold cuts from Publix? It was on those, too. <laughs> USDA approved gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Do I you got to go to Fish Bones or something? Yeah, I got to go. Sit outside so you can smoke a cigar. There you go. No, there you go. There I go. Sounds good. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors.